it, Sarah. And this is what I've come up with for our April Art Journal page. Now, April showers bring May flowers, but this is based on what I see, well, besides the rain today, which it's raining crazy, but all of the blooming, um, the trees are all popping. So I kind of got inspired yesterday and I wanted to play around with this technique. And it's something I used to do in decorative painting. And Betty Caithness is one of the um, main artists that paint, painted these um, kind of stippled bushes and trees. And it definitely is a technique that you want to have the right tools for. So you may want to get uh, a deer foot brush. And then I have this Shui foliage angle brush, which this is kind of more of a, uh, a rough bristle brush. Just a mess because I don't clean them. Um, but it gives you a cool way to make bushes and trees easier than if you try to make every petal and every branch separately. So I happen to have these in my stash. I also have um, this little Langnickel Dabby's Texture. So they're called different things, but basically this is, let's see, I'll just use... So basically here's your brush and the bristles come down like this so they're very so you have this is the toe and this is the heel something like that okay that's what you're looking for that's what this guy does and this I've called it a deer foot this is just called the low Cornell 410 3 8 inch but it's a deer foot if you look at it well I guess it kind of comes down straight and then it kind of looks like a deer's foot. See the hoof? So that's what they're going for. And the reason is you can load the toe and you get this cool look. Now, if, if you don't have those, which, I mean, maybe some of you do have them in your stash. Just have a look, you know. Um, I don't really know another way to get it to do this. You could probably just find a really kind of, you know, even an angle brush like this that's really beat up. You could probably do it with that or get something close to it. But I'm just going to share with you the way um, you use these specific tools. Um, I'm also going to use a 9 by 12 piece of watercolor paper. That's what we've been, we've been doing all our pages on. And at the end of the year, we will uh, bind this somehow. So we're on month number four. I did two for February because I did a Valentine's page. Um, so I have my 9 by 12 inch piece of watercolor paper. And we're going to create a background just by blending colors out. Something like this. I have this one sitting aside. But you want to take your green pretty much to halfway up the page because the way we're going to create a foreground, a middle ground, and a background, it just gives you more um, room to get that dimensional look to go backwards. All right, now this one isn't, I did this in like five minutes. I was just trying to get a layout because I did it horizontally too, but this one just looks too full. Um, so I, I ended up going with the vertical, so we're going to do that again. So I just have a, a generous wash brush a decent size this is a number 16 and I have some of my FW acrylic inks out and I just decided to use them because I have them and I like working with these they're easy um, I'm gonna use two colors of blue and two colors of green and they happen to be from the sets that are the uh, pearlescents and the regulars and I've gotten both these sets at Michaels uh, with coupons you don't have to use these, just use some greens and some blues, acrylic paints. And I have Process Cayenne, which is a flat blue. Put a little bit of that. You don't need a lot, so I'm already putting out too much paint, I can tell, because I still have some left in there. Uh, this is called Galactic Blue. 
The green is emerald green. So pretty. I love this color green. And the fluorescent, I'm sorry, pearlescent, not fluorescent, waterfall green. I'm going to put a little bit of those out on my palette. And I'm just going to use this wash brush to blend them up. So like I said, you want to go about halfway up the page with the greens. So I'm going to start with this Galat no, what is it called? Uh, waterfall green. And just start pulling it in. I like to add the pearl essence and the um, flats to get kind of a layered effect. So let's put some of this flat paint on top of it. And it's okay if you have, I should have put something under it because I'm getting paint all over the background on my, it's okay if you have white spots showing through and all that. I want to put a little more of the, see I'm out of it already, the pearlescent. And have puddles because it'll just dry. And this is the background, you're not even going to really see a lot of it. Actually you do see some, yeah you do see it. I'm going to go into the blue. And just cover the sky. Again, you don't have to cover it because there's going to be white in the sky and streaks. Um, look, you can pull a little green up to it. It's okay. We're going to have green up there because we're going to put bushes. And then some of the galactic blue just for some shine and variation. All right, and just let it dry. I think I want to put a little more dark green down bottom. Just to ground it. It looked a little light down there. All right, I'm going to set that aside and let it dry while I talk about um, what else we're gonna do? Let me just put all this stuff aside. Um, I always use palette paper because that's what I'm used to. But anything works as a palette. This could be a palette, um, a piece, uh, a paper plate. I use a lot, a lot of times, just use a paper plate. But we're gonna get out a few colors. We're gonna need brown for our tree trunk. And I, guys, I have this little paint dispenser right here. It's a spin and rack that I got it. I think I got it at AC Moore. And I just have my go-to colors on that because I have paint out the wazoo. I have um, all this craft paint. And that's what we're going to use. So I have, I pulled brown iron oxide. And then I pulled a dark and a light uh, value of a pink, a purple, and the white, which I'm going to use the white pearlescent, which is somewhere over here. I have the FW white pearl, so I'm just going to use that to highlight my white. And I mean, actually, I could highlight, yeah, I, well, no, I don't have a purple pearlescent, do I? Yes, I do. Maybe we'll use that because I forgot about it. Anywho, so just the colors that you see in springtime. For the most part, oops, drop the brush. For the most part, are um, the dogwoods are popping now. I have a blooming cherry in my front yard that is gorgeous and it's pink. So I might want to put a pink one behind this white one this time. I think I do. But the thing is, you don't want it to just look like blobs on the page. And that's the tricky part. So you need a light touch. Um, you want to keep the paint kind of not dry but just on the tips of the bristles so there is a little learning curve to this um, but the first thing you want to do is so let's see where's my this one's not the one that's drying I can go in with this you want to create I'm gonna get my pencil so we're gonna have some bushes in the foreground we're gonna put. I'm gonna put a couple like pine trees. See, you can't see this. I'm gonna do this with my uh, with a marker so that you can definitely know where we're going. I'm just using purple. Somehow my black always gets. You know what? It might be in here. 
Um, but yeah, I'll just draw on this so you can totally see where I'm going with this. Oh, I'll use this. Is it permanent? Yeah. Anywho, I could have used this. I have a zig. I have so many markers that I never use. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use this. This is my zig writer. Um, anywho, so like I just put a couple of pine trees, like this shape, in the, in the very background, right? And you can have one in the front right here too. Um, then we're going to put a couple of more like bushes in the background. And definitely like a couple in the foreground and then there's going to be a middle ground here and this is where your main trees are going to come so here's going to be your main tray and a main tray from down here so these are kind of these are your very furthest I always say furthest the closest or the main ones that you want to focus on but you're going to put a little bush there and maybe something peeking out here and there's going to be a big tree back here that's like poking in from the side and over here so you have one two three four so it goes back that's the idea anyway so we're going to put this the trunks on pretty much last but I just want you to kind of envision where you're going before we start so that you can kind of, and, I'll, and you can just do it along with me because I just winged it. I just kind of just started plopping them in, but I really like the way this one got filled up. So I think I'm just going to put a pink dogwood behind this white one and fill in this space because I kind of just have this tree and then it doesn't have a, a trunk or anything and there was this open space but you can't really see I mean you can't tell you know it's covered there's I don't know if they're called um, Japanese maples but those red trees that are out there see I kind of made these pink but there's red bushes there's a couple Japanese maples poking through so I have some um, Mendicino for that it's like well no actually I like this the burgundy rose it's a little more rusty colored because that's the kind of color that I get from those I have two different greens so I'm going to use probably for the pine trees I'll use dark forest and then for the regular leafy trees I'll use these leaf green and like this is called citron green so just pull so that we have our pine tree our Japanese maple the leafy green trees and then I have some pink and purple for um, the dogwoods and then the white. The purple is really more like an azalea. I think these are kind of could be considered the azaleas right here. Anything that's kind of coming off the ground. You know, I, listen, I'm not a gardener. <laughs> I'm not a professional. I'm just, this is just whimsy and getting the idea and just playing with color and having fun. So... That's what, we're, that's what I'm doing, guys. And if it's not fun, please click off this and move on to your next video. Um, because I want it to be fun. So I'm, gonna, I'm just rinsing my brush. Um, Alright, so let's see if that's dry. Where I put it? Up here. It's a little bit wet. Um, so... just don't want to make mud I'm gonna get out okay so then I want to talk to you about how I load my brush when I do this technique with the deer foot but the first one we're going to use is this one it's like a an angle brush that kind of is all splayed out so anything that you feel like you might be able to get this technique we're gonna do some pine trees first so I'm gonna get out this dark forest green Actually, I have some out already. I'm just going to use that. And we're going to just, I'm going to set the, all the bristles in the paint. I'm going to load it, but just the tips. I don't need to load the whole brush. And then I'm going to come over and I'm going to pounce a little bit. Just pounce so that you kind of get, so you, the less is more with this technique. But you want to load it 
and then a soft touch is really what you want to do. And I have a hard time with a soft touch, but I'm just going to start and just make um, a couple of pine trees here in the background. And I'm starting upside down because I'm going to kind of pounce it in like that. And these are in the background and you probably really won't even see them, but I just like having the variation of color. So I'm going to put one in the middle ground too. Let's, I'm going to reload and just put one right here. Maybe a little bigger because he's in the middle. Now what color could I highlight these with? Mm, I don't really want to use the same color. I think the leaf green so the middle color green I'm going to use. Oh, and I have some out of that too. And I'm going to just wipe, dry wipe my brush off. I'm not going to put it in water because I don't want it to get muddy. So I'm just going to wipe the tips off and clean the brush. And I'm going to do the same thing with that lighter color green. So I'm loading all the bristles in it. Come over to my palette and pounce it off. I don't want a lot of paint on there. Let me move this out of the way. And again, just do the same technique, but really lightly. And maybe even on only one side, too, because that gives a highlighted and a shaded feel to it. But for this, we're just going to, you know, put it wherever. So you can't really see that a ton, but I think it gave it a little bit of brightness. This one looks like a little wonky. Let's see, do I want to put one? No, I'm good. I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, let's just put some red in now before we go to, we're going to put a couple of, um, I, now I'm rinsing my brush. We're going to do Actually, I'm going to switch brushes, but I wanted to see how much I could do with this brush. If you don't have a deer foot, I think this one could go pretty well. I'm going to use burgundy. No, what did I say I wanted to use? Yeah, burgundy rose. It's a little bit more of a browner red. I have it out too already, but again, I'm just going to use the tip of the brush this time to see if I can get this brush to do the same thing as the deer foot. So I've loaded the tip, and I'm just going to pounce it. Oh yeah, I think we're going to be good. A very light touch. Let's put uh, a, a weep, what do they call them? Is it a weeping one? A Japanese maple, right there. And I want to put a Japanese maple in the background too, like a, a taller tree right here. So just kind of pounce it in using the tip of your brush into a tree shape. So it could be a little taller. Something like that so that it kind of... and you don't need the stem or anything. Don't worry about that right now. Let's put one in the middle ground here. I guess that's the background, middle ground, foreground need a little bit more paint, but I'm just using the tip, the bristles. I didn't load the whole brush, and I'm going to put one right here. So these are a little bit more of a bush. But they're all over the place in my neighborhood. And, I mean, let me think. They have trees, yeah, yeah, okay. So, I mean, and if we wanted to highlight it, we could add a little bit of white, but I think I'm going to leave that just like that. Um, put one more right here. So I'm, I'm liking the effect of this brush, but I'm going to move now to the, the deer foot and just show you the difference. Um, you know, it's a little bit more rounded and, you know, so it, it it just gives a little bit of a different, really where it is most effective is when you're doing these trees, like a, a dogwood, you get the really like the dappled effect of the dogwood. So we're going to get out, um, 
I think I need some green, so we're going to go with the middle color green. I, don't, I feel like I'm yelling. I'm so sorry. Uh, the middle color green, and just on the tips of, actually, yeah. And again, we're going to pounce the paint off. So you just want it on, you don't need it all throughout. I'm going to get a little bit all over. And I'm going to put a green tree coming in from over here. It's a pretty decent sized tree. But we're just seeing the, the side of it, one half of it. See, and I should have put another red tree here or something. I think I'm going to. It'll be on top of it. And then I'm going to make another one poking out from this side. Just a little bit, not a ton. And then we're going to do a couple of, uh, well, green, like maybe these are azaleas that have bloomed away already. Right here. Uh, definitely here. And here. And I think I'm just going to do color in the front. I could do one over here. It's going to get um, covered pretty much. All right, I need to put a little bit something red. No, I probably don't. It'll be fine. Um, but we're going to put a few, poke a few pink ones there and maybe something here all right so i think we're going to go to our lightest green real quick which i have is called citron oh i have it i'm just going to use this puddle right here citron green i'm going to just dry wipe the brush so i really am just wiping on a dry paper towel you could probably rinse it but i'm trying to keep this really dry. Um, citron green. And this is just to highlight. So you really want to keep it just on the tips. And we're just going to hit, let's see, I'm just going to go hit and miss here and there. I don't want too much. Uh, just to the left on the bushes. All right, so that's that. Um, all right, I think we're good. I want to put in now. Let's put our pink pink and purples in first. I've rinsed my brush though. I wanted to get away from the green because we're going to go <clears throat> pinks and purples. So we're doing this whole piece basically with like one or two brushes. All right. So I think I'm going to put out a little bit of this pearlescent purple too, just because I want to see what it does how it looks. And what's my other color? I just have straight purple, it's called. So they're very similar, very close, but this is going to be flat or a matte finish and that's going to be uh, pearlescent. So we'll see how it looks. So again, just the tip kind of, you're working off the tip. I'm going to load it in that purple and then pounce it on my palette. Now look, it's too thick. I want to get it, thin it out so that you can kind of get that, that effect is what I'm going for. So it kind of looks layered. So I'm going to put a couple, some color up here, one right here. And definitely down here. And 
looks a little mushy and that's way bigger than I than I thought I gotta always tell myself be minimal don't go too big I'm gonna put a little one right in front of here and I get I want pink I think that's it for my purple so now let's see I kind of want to let that dry a second before I come in with the um, I think I do I'm gonna let it dry for a sec I rinsed my brush and I'm gonna get some I think I used um, pearl fuchsia no just regular old royal fuchsia it's flat and do our pink bushes and I'm just gonna use let's see I have out bubble gum but I think I have a pearlescent pink you know what I have that I haven't used in forever neon nah I don't want to do that we'll just use bubble gum um, oopsie alright again I want to load just the toe you don't need it all over the place I'm going to load this with the fuchsia the royal fuchsia and just pounce it we're, I, we're still doing bushes so I'm going to put one here and definitely over here Hmm. And they don't have to be azalea bushes. They can be little flowers that are coming up. I don't know. Um, but I think I want a pink. I'm going to do a pink dogwood right here because there's going to be white on top of that so let me try keep it small and it's just popping in from the side I'm going to on a dirty brush, I just grabbed the bubblegum pink. And I don't know if that looks like a dogwood. Not really. just to the left of to highlight I'm going to just do the left on the bushes kind of and I think if I get the white just right this could be good um, I'm going to do a white bush right here and I think we're in the home stretch guys I think I'm going to put in my trunks yeah, I think we're in the home stretch because I don't want to overdo it and I always, I tend to overdo it. So, but it's looking like something, right? I think it is. Um, so, I have some, what was it, brown iron oxide? Yes, brown iron oxide. And like a round brush to just pull in a trunk. Now, I kind of have one coming from behind here and one that's a little more coming from behind here so I don't know if you'll uh, let me just start doing it where's my that's probably the brush that fell oh no here it is I have just a round brush this is a number I can't even see four the number four round and brown iron oxide 
And when I load my brush to do this, I really pull the paint through the bristles so that it's loaded. And I'm going to turn it upside down. And what did I say? Let me just have a look. So this one's going to come from kind of like behind. It could be in front. I think I might put it right in front, right here. So I'm just going to start it right here. Don't go too big. Keep it kind of small. And because these aren't your biggest type of trees. They're kind of medium sized trees. I'm going to try and just, that's probably tall enough. And then I'm going to start branching out. And we'll highlight this too. All right, and then the next one's going to come from kind of over here off to the side from behind here. It's coming from behind. Again, I got to remember to keep it small so I stay in my head. Easy, Sarah, because I just tend to. So that looks pretty good. Um, just to get them started, um, this one should be. I want to put the trunk or the branches, at least the start of branches, because uh, you will be able to see some of this through the foliage. So I'm just going to roughly, I'm just roughly letting the, like I'm letting the brush, uh, dry brush almost, just come in and start to establish some branches kind of just ideas of branches right now because I'm going to get my liner brush and really make them uh, all right but I like that oops easy um I like it this one's a little bit wider because it's more forward And the other one is a little more slender because it's kind of a little behind. All right, so I like that. That's kind of got it's establishing where I want to. Um, I'm gonna put these in my my liner brush. Must have been the one that fell. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just using a number one liner. So it's a little bit thicker, but it has a bit of a longer bristle. I just want to play with some more branches. I'm just going to branch this out a little bit wider and keep it kind of more twiggy looking, not real thick. but this shouldn't really show it'll just peek through here and there so it's really just the idea of branches back there we're not doing such a good job uh, but it would be taller I want to get it up a little bit higher whoops that was a lot of paint And this one's going to be taller. That one's not going to be as tall. And we can add in a few when we're done, too. Um, I think I'm going to just pull some, let's see, some of that red. I think I'm going to pull some of that red. It, it might not be um, light enough. Kind of on the trunk, too. And see what that looks like. Can't really tell. Nah, I think I need a lighter brown. I didn't highlight or do anything. I think I just rushed through this one and I pulled pink up through. Like there's just some kind of cool. 
it was wet, so I pulled wet paint up through it. Um, I do think it needs uh, some type of... Ooh, you know what we never did was our purple. Shoot. We're just going to highlight to the left of the purple bushes. I forgot, sorry. And I put out this beautiful pearlescent color. And hopefully it'll show up as a highlight. Oh yeah. Pretty, I love that. Can you see it? Oh, that made me happy. Oh, I wanna put it all over this guy. But that pink one's on top of it. All right, cool, good. I'm glad I remembered that. Um, Cause that is gorge. I'm gonna put that on something else. Um, we're done, guys, except for doing the white. And I just wanna do something with this brown. I guess just grab, I'm just gonna grab a lighter color. Um, autumn brown, yeah. Autumn brown is such a gorgeous brown too. And I'm just gonna kind of float it, but not really, kind of side load it and not just roughly so i'm loading a an angle brush on the tip and i'm going to corner load it like this and just pull some highlight up there it shouldn't be right near the bottom it should be darker but yeah i like that sorry there's a glare um so yeah just up the left side i don't know why i guess the sun's coming from the left today that looks good. And you know what? We could be shading next to everything and giving it like, look, I'll show you how I would do that. Uh, like maybe I'll just take some of this brown. And you guys don't have to do that. But you would probably just like shade behind stuff like that. Like to make it look like it's tucked behind. like the green how about my dark green dried up but like I would go along the bottom maybe along this tree I didn't do this on my other one but all this stuff kind of just is little finishing touches that you could do, but definitely like along the bottom of stuff. Just gives it more dimension, right? What would be there? I have it highlighted. Um, all right, <clears throat> let's get the white on there. I just wanted to make sure my brown was dry. There's a little. And we're going to use the deer, the deer foot and some nice fresh white. I'm just going to put it right out here and yep it's dry or it's clean again you want to use the circle so for this one specifically I really want to make it like little sections that's how a dogwood looks to me it's just little sections so you don't want them to touch necessarily you want to keep them separate all right, so to do that, I'm just gonna hope for the best. I'm gonna load, let's see, just the toe. So I mean the widest area. This is the toe, this is the heel. So just the toe and pounce it off. Cause you, you want some wet, wet paint and some not as wet. And let's just start, let's see. I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. And you can overlap. Go 
go off the page oh I like it it's fun I need more white and we're gonna highlight with the um, the floor the pearlescent white after this dries a bit all right again I'm gonna do this tray he's a little further back which eh, kind of made that a little high I don't want them to look like they're bumping into each other but they kind of are looking like that and I didn't want to cover too much of the other bushes either but all right just play with it until you like the shape and I want to put a bush over here so this is kind of like a white azalea bush and I think I want to put one over here something right there and I love it look it's coming together gotta put something right here but don't get carried away because you can lose it um I have to make a branch kind of fall down here oh, I lost it Maybe I should have. No, it would be that way. All right, that's fine. Because I could stipple in green, too. I think I want to stop because I don't want to mess it up. It looks good. And I'm going to um, highlight with the pearlescent white in a minute. I just want to give it a chance to dry. Um, you can always... Um, <clears throat> shade around things too like let's see I mean it just adds to the depth I know I'm I just wanted to keep it mainly based on this technique so like but if I took a little bit of this um, this is the leaf green and just put a shadow over here so I'm just going to put a shadow to the uh, whoops to the right of the trees probably on top of <clears throat> this row of bushes I put that right in the white that's why it looks different so like kind of like that was wet I should have waited but just like that kind of behind on top of it right um, The whites well let me blow dry it and then I'm gonna just you know what you could have little flowers popping up little daffodil bundles and things like that um, I'm probably just gonna leave it like this this is this is what I was going for this is the inspiration that I was kind of going for seeing all those colors all the bushes and trees so let me get my dogwood one last time and we're going to do a little bit on the toe this is the pearlescent white oh my brush looks pretty dirty hold on 
bad. All right. And let's see. I'm going to start trying to fix that where I... But I really do just want to put it where it already was. I don't want to put more and cover up. Just give it a little shimmer. That purple is super pretty. All right, I'm going to stop. Oh, I guess I could put it on the bushes. And that's it. I gotta write what? We gotta write April on here. I was getting, in the beginning, when I first started, I was using stickers. So let's see. I just wrote it on here, January. I wrote it in metallic because this is metallic y. Uh, this one was the Valentine's. I just stamped the date and I stamped Valentine's. And this one I just wrote it too. So I think I'm just gonna write it. Maybe uh, at the top. I'm getting warm. All right. Gonna, you know what? I don't. We haven't been signing our name either. But I think I'm gonna put. I like it. Sorry, I'm just looking at it. Cause you know. Eat now. Look. Here's the difference. Very similar, but I like, I kind of like the distance between these, but this one I took my time. This one I took my time a little bit more, but they're both, you know, the same basically, right? I think you get the point. All right, so we're going to consider this one done. April, I'm going to put it with, maybe I will use a metallic, but I have all my, sh my, um, <clears throat> I have none of these are so no I'm not gonna use metallic I'm gonna use this purple this is April I'm gonna write it right at the top and that's it Guess we should sign our names, don't you think? I like it though. I'm excited. So I hope you guys like that. I mean there's there's so much more you could do, but I wanna leave it simple. I wanna be I wanna be done. This is what was my inspiration. I totally this is it. I got it. So I hope you enjoyed that and thank you so much for watching.